Hey Swashbucklers, our friends and now forget that metal swashbuckling storytelling band from Buenos Aires presents their new single, The Black Corsair. It's the opening track on their upcoming album based on the swashbuckling classic pirate novel by Emilio Salgari. Get the digital download of The Black Corsair now at underthecrossbones.com slash Corsair. Raise the sails! Turn it up, swashbucklers. You're listening to Under the Crossbones, episode number 33. My name is Phil Johnson. I'm your host for the show. Thank you very much for tuning in, for listening, for telling your friends, all that good stuff. Uh, not only is it the cheap microphone still, uh, uh, first of all, I'm coming to you from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, a uh, nice little Midwestern town uh, that smells like oatmeal. And it smells like oatmeal because the Quaker Oats factory is here, uh, right on the river. And uh, so half of the year, apparently, from what I know, it smells like oatmeal here, which is nice. It's pleasant. It's kind of sweet smelling. The other half of the year, they make uh, dog food. Uh, that is a part of the year that I've not been here. Uh, but apparently, it does not smell quite as so sweet uh, when the factory is making dog food. Uh, but here in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, on the last bit of my Midwest tour before I head up to Canada again, uh, coming to you from downtown Cedar Rapids in a Doubletree Hotel right next to the train tracks. Uh, that's the interesting thing about these old, these old towns, these old Midwest towns, is uh, the city planning uh, way back when, not as good, not as hot, uh, where they would go, yeah, let's run a freight train right through downtown, which probably made sense in the 1800s uh, when they were moving stuff off of those freight trains uh, and into buildings. Uh, but now it runs directly next to my hotel, uh, which is kind of interesting. Uh, if you can't tell yet, uh, I have a head cold. Yeah, so not only am I still using uh, my crummy little microphone uh, that I keep in my laptop bag because I forgot my good podcasting microphone, uh, after the last show, right after the last show came out, in fact, I came down with a nasty head cold. Uh, it happened uh, Wednesday when I was uh, playing the Diamond Joe Casino in Dubuque, and uh, and it is hanging on uh, through my final show in Cedar Rapids tonight at Penguins Comedy Club. So it's been an adventure. Uh, my With my voice being like this, it makes it a little tough to sing. I'm a little tough to sing. Uh, so I'm going to probably keep this part a little bit short today and jump you right into the interviews and the comedy and the music and all that kind of stuff. Um, something else that is going on is, uh, oh, speaking of, you know, episode number 33, fun fact about 33. I forgot to do the fun fact. The fun fact about 33 is uh, in Disneyland, uh, there is a private club called Club 33. Uh, and there's a big 33 on the door, or at least uh, before the remodel, there was a, the, the thir- I think the 33 is still on the door, but that is not the main entrance to the club anymore. They've moved the main entrance when they remodeled the club. I don't know if you're familiar with it or not, uh, but Google Club 33 if you're not. Uh, it's really a cool place. I've uh, one time had the privilege to dine in Club 33 at Disneyland, and it was fantastic. It was really great. Uh, so anyway, uh, episode 33. Uh, you can find all the show notes for this episode at underthecrossbones.com slash 033. That's where you'll find all this information here. Uh, so uh, I am going to be doing a couple of these episodes uh back to back here, not releasing them back to back. You'll hear them every Tuesday, just like normal, but I'm doing these a little bit early, uh, because as when I go to Vancouver next weekend, uh, part of that is performing at laugh lines. And the other part of that is vacationing with my girlfriend for her birthday, uh, which happens to fall right in the midst of my production schedule for these episodes. And she will kill me if I sit down at a laptop with a microphone while we're on vacation. So I'll be knocking out a couple of these, uh, in a row here, uh, which means you'll get to hear the, um, this lovely, sweet tone of my head cold, rattled voice for two episodes. So my apologies for that. Um, oh, we got a new uh, uh, review on the iTunes. Uh, I want to thank MCH2 for leaving that wonderful review. Um, you left it in February. <laughs> I'm not sure why I didn't see it until now. But thank you for that nice review, MCH2. I really appreciate that. If you have not left uh, an iTunes review for the show yet, please go do that. Uh, it's very helpful for pumping us up in the rankings and all that kind of stuff. Uh, very, very helpful. My guest on the show today is Jeff Dixon of Dixon Woodworking. Now, there are a lot of woodworking people in the pirate community uh, making uh, treasure chests and jewelry and, and, and peg legs, maybe. I don't know, all sorts of stuff. But Jeff Dixon and his family at Dixon Woodworking make the most incredible pirate ship playhouses you are ever going to see. All right? 
And I encourage you to go to the show notes under the crossbones.com slash 033 to see some pictures and also go to dixonwoodworking.com to see some pictures. These are playhouses. Like if you have kids or if you think you might have kids, not like you think you might have left your kids somewhere, but if you think you might have kids in the future or if you have no kids at all, you are going to want one of these playhouses for your house. Okay. And they're built for adults too. So that's the cool part. Uh, he, he'll talk about that during the interview. But these playhouses are so awesome. Uh, they're hooked up with audio. Uh, they've got cannons that you can make them go boom. Man, these things are super cool. And I saw Jeff's website, and I was like, i got to get this guy on the show to talk about these. Plus, there's a really great backstory to it. So we're going to hear from Jeff Dixon uh, about his pirate ship playhouses. And um, I think you're going to dig it. Uh, show's coming up. Uh, by the time you hear this, I will be finished at Penguins in uh, Cedar Rapids, and the shows, I will say, are fantastic. Last night was great. Tonight's going to be great. Um, coming up March 25th, 26th, I'll be headlining at Laugh Lines in Vancouver, Canada. I think it's actually in New Westminster, but the Vancouver area. Uh, April 1st, I'll be headlining Bluefin Billiards in Monterey, California. April the 2nd, I will be headlining at Apcal Winery in Madera, California. Uh, these are all headlining dates. April 8th, I will be at the Sports Basement in San Francisco, California. Yeah, that sounds weird to play a sporting goods store, uh, but they actually have some pretty cool shows there. So uh, April 8th, Sports Basement, San Francisco, California. April 9th, I will be making a rare hometown appearance, headlining a show at JJ's Blues in San Jose, California. You can always go to underthecrossbones.com and uh, click the Tour Dates button. And that's uh, where you can find me. By the way, if you've been to my artist website recently, you, you may have noticed it's a disaster. Uh, that is uh, mostly fixed. Uh, if you go to who, philjohnsoncomedy.com now or uh, roadsideattraction.com, you'll find a brand new site that actually works. And uh, still tweaking it, still playing with it, uh, but uh, it's it's working now. And uh, cool. All right, so I'm going to shut up and rest my voice a little bit here. We're going to get into this interview with Jeff Dixon from dixonwoodworking.com. Check it out. You're actually one of my favorite kind of guests because you're not somebody from the pirate community that everybody's heard of, uh, and uh, and you're not a high profile piratey type person. So uh, tell me and my listeners what it is that your company does. Well, our company builds uh, we call it extreme family clubhouses. They are um, a pirate ship clubhouse, uh, anywhere from twelve to twenty foot long. Um, they're computerized. Uh, they are quite amazing. It's all marine-grade mahogany. They're just made to last, and they're very authentic. We have five different sizes with different names. We customize them. Each one is just made according to how each person would like it. That's really cool. So when you say computerized, what elements of it are, are computerized? Uh, it would be the sound system. There's two separate systems on the ship. Uh, one of them operates the cannons, and then the other one is uh, a music system. And it's all high-grade system that's in these ships. Um, it's Polk Audio stereo system. It's made for adults. Uh -huh. The kids get on and they play and have fun, but this is made for them to enjoy. Um, the ship will, um, there's a USB stick in the computer. You uh -huh. take it out, put it in your laptop, files open up, and you drop in and program how you want that ship to react. If you want the cannons to talk, you want it to read a book or whatever, the ship will react however you program it. So each one is very unique. And they run 24-7. Um, the computer's only about the size of a credit card. It's extremely small. Oh, wow. Is that a uh, is that like a Raspberry Pi or something that you're using in there? Uh, it actually is. Our okay. son-in-law is a computer programmer, and he wrote the programs for what we do. That's neat. That's very cool. So uh, let's go into the, the history of the company a little bit, because I know it's a really cool and interesting story. So tell me how where the company started and how you ended up making Pirate Ship Clubhouses. Well, the company started in 1980. Uh, my trade is a finished carpenter, stair builder. And uh, this went on clear up until about 2005. And we started then building high-grade furniture um, and three-dimensional carvings for the luxury RVs. Mm. Then those markets fell uh, during this crash. And four years ago, uh, my four-year-old grandson... He's over having breakfast, and he's, Papa, I'd like a pirate ship. <laughs> and so we uh, decided that, you know, we would make him a ship in the shop. We, you know, had no idea, know how to build it, you know, so we're, I'm sketching it up in the drawings, and then uh, he's coloring the picture of it, and there's pictures of all this on our website, but he was just thrilled, and um, 
my wife goes, now you understand what he wants? And I said, yeah, he's got his pirate ship. She says, no, he wants a pirate ship. <laughs> and so we started building the first one, and um, about halfway through it, we had taken it down twice and restructured, and then everybody says, you know, this needs to be something that everyone can purchase. Mm. So we turned it into a production piece. Um, son-in-law jumped in with the sound system and started uh, writing the code and creating that. And then we actually spent oh, a little over two years creating six ships and testing them to see what happens to these. And the more we kept testing, the more they became more adult toys. <laughs> uh, and it's, it's very true. All, all but one of our customers is a grandparent. Ah, okay. They have bought, they have bought them for the grandkids to use at their homes. It's yard art. It's decor. It's just an atmosphere. And each one is unique. However, they would like it to operate. Um, and so now, all the company does now is build extreme clubhouses. We build tiki huts. We've got gang planks that come off the top with swing sets under and 14-foot slides. And even the slides are adult rated up to 250 pounds. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. Well, you know, you're never too old to be a kid. Right. And it's really <laughs> neat that it is so much fun in the shop now. It's just amazing. The grandson, he is in every aspect of what we're doing. He comes over and he tells me, this is this. I need this color here. I want this. He is, uh, you know, <laughs> he just got a brand new ship here three weeks ago. Um, he keeps upgrading to our next one. <laughs> and um it's neat because we get to try things that are extremely unusual that, you know, the, ch the kids have a mind that they, they're thinking outside the box. Sure. So we really enjoy what we do and we just have a blast with the people. Um, that's great. So he's about what, seven years old now? He's seven years old right now. That's, that's great. He'll be, uh, he'll be all ready to, uh, build just about anything by the time he gets done with you guys. <laughs> you know, we just finished a great big ship. It's our display ship that starts out this year in Seattle and works through California. And um, we had changed a couple of little pieces on the ship. He was in the shop here week before last, and he's looking at it and just immediately walks up and tells me that this is wrong. <laughs> that this is not like the other part. I mean, it's just that quick. <laughs> so we constantly have to ask him if it's okay if we make a change. Uh, <laughs> That's he so chose great. one of our coolest moldings on the ship. Uh, since we do carvings, all of the moldings are carved. And so uh, Queen Anne's Revenge has a skull pattern carved into it with a diamond, and then there's uh, swords crossing and such. We had painted six different samples all different directions of that. And he got to choose what went on the ship and that's what's on there permanently now. Huh. And, and even a customer, um, we have one customer that insisted on having butterflies on his butter pirate ship. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of really, it, it, it's really amazing when the adults get in at a show or somewhere, they're on there for an extremely long time. Kids will play for a while, uh -huh. but it is really more of something, especially with the sound system. I mean, those cannons could be shooting uh, laser shots from Star Wars, you know, whatever right. you want it to do. Um, we have an ice ship that we make for the girls that uh -huh. shoots a snowball sound. <laughs> uh, but the pirate is the most popular, and that theme... Um, the big thing with these ships is they are made to last with uh -huh. zero maintenance. That's um, always nice. Just to sit back. Yeah, and when people get a, a hand in, you know, like if they want to change the name, if they want to, you know, what makes them happy and how do they want to create it? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And uh, I, I have to say, I saw the your, uh, what is your grandson's name, the seven-year-old? Zachary. Zachary. I saw Zachary's drawing of the, the pirate ship on your website, and it absolutely makes sense that he has that sort of visual acuity uh, for construction because that is a better pirate ship than I could draw now. Um. <laughs> well, I actually sketched it. <laughs> oh, did you? Okay. I, well, he's sitting next to me, and there's, there's actually uh, – there may be pictures online, but he's sitting next to me, and um, he's telling me what he wants. Uh -huh. And so I'm, I, I'm eating breakfast, and he's eating. We're just quickly – and I'm sketching, and then he points out, I want this, 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 and and – pass it over to him and then he's coloring it. Okay. And, 
but it was just funny. You know, I, I couldn't cut anything out. The back had to be tapered. I mean, he's, he was four <laughs> telling me that, that all of these things had to be in there, the mask this way. And I'm going, geez. Um, and and, and where, it was funny. Where did he yeah. pick up that kind of knowledge of what a pirate ship looks like? Out of curiosity. You know, our family is huge Disney people. Okay. We, we really enjoy Disneyland. And so he's been down there since he... Uh, before a year old. Okay. I mean, okay. Th- several times a year, and I'm sure that's where he, you know, started liking the theme and what was going on with it. That makes sense. Uh, absolutely. That's where I picked up my Pirate Jones, too. So that, uh, yeah. yeah that and then we tried sense. to keep some names that were authentic names from history, like uh-huh. Queen Anne's Revenge, and then we've got Flying Dutchman nice. uh, Adventure, some of those to, to go in, but. It's really enjoyable. Our other grandkids now, each one of them, I, we just finished up a uh, uh, Flying Dutchman for Luke, and he's five, and he insisted he had to have a green ship and had to have it this way. <laughs> um, the granddaughter was the one, she kind of went off board. She told me she had to have a let it go boat, a frozen <laughs> one. <so. laughs> At least it's not pink. It's right. blue. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, we, we have a lot of fun in the family. The whole family is involved um, in what we do and create, and it's very enjoyable. That's great. So they, uh, tell me about the process of what happens when somebody decides they want one of these. How does the process go uh, between I want one and actually getting it in your, in your backyard or wherever? Um, well, we just sit down first and find out the des- design that they want, uh-huh. um, what size, uh, give them all the options that are in it. And so we'll create that out. Um, and if it's something special, like the person that wanted butterflies, then we actually do carvings, and we will send them samples of what we're doing. So they can get approved that it is what and how they want it. And then we'll do a drawing and send it down for approval. Um, then um, we just go ahead and we start in, because um, what these ships are, they're in sections so if someone needed it larger or smaller, we can create it around our original design mm. without rethinking the wheel. Uh-huh. And then um, a lot of the panels are bent and curved, so we put them in the clamps, and then they will bend for uh, a week or so. And um, it becomes you know, a process of they're cut on CNC computerized machines, mm. so it makes them extremely accurate. These parts... Um, all slip into dados and lock together. Uh, okay. You may call it like a Lego or something. I mean, every piece locks in, in together. And so the whole ship only weighs 800 pounds. Oh, wow. Because of the way we do it, and it's marine-grade mahogany out of Europe. So it's, mm-hmm. it's very lightweight, very strong. Um, then once it's all assembled in the sections, then it's all sanded and uh, routed so there's no rough edges or anything on it, so there's no splinters. And then it's all hand-painted. My son and I do all the painting. Um, Depending on the ship, uh, the one that we're taking on the shows this year, it took the two of us uh, almost five days to hand-paint the ship. Wow. Because while we're hand-painting all of the detail into the boards so they look like they're cracked and split and not just a solid color. Right. Um, yeah. No, I, the, the pictures yeah. I saw are fantastic paintings. I mean, it definitely doesn't look like something you'd pick up at Toys R Us is what I'm saying. <laughs> well, yes, that's true. But the whole thing is, um, if it was just something for the kids to play on, then it's just a solid color and, and walk away from it. I, I wanted it to look as authentic as possible. Uh-huh. And the more rustic it looks to me, the better it is. But yet we can make it look rustic but it's not dangerous. There's no splits. There's no cracks. There's uh-huh. no actual fractures in the material. So we just create all that into it. Um, we actually have created the CNCs to cut in cracks and splits into the boards mm. for us. So we, we're cheating when we're doing it, but <laughs> we create the look that we're after. And then um, some days in the shop, it's just amazing. We'll have an idea and we'll spend days creating some stupid little part <laughs> and back and forth and back and forth, trying to get a, a certain look. Um, that's how much fun we have. And then bingo, there it is. That's really you know? great. How long does it take you to, to turn out one? Um, depending on the size of the ship, anywhere from two weeks to four weeks. Okay. 
Um, and if they have a gangplank system, um, that is extremely cool because it comes off the upper deck. They're 10 foot long. It's got uh, netting down both sides, just uh, like a theme park. Uh-huh. And at the end of it is the great big slide, and there'll be swings or something underneath. Um, those kind of things, you know, just start adding a little more time. Usually the standard on one of these is if someone placed an order um, today, then we tell them that it's six to eight weeks okay. out. It doesn't take that long, but when we have to start bending our parts and letting them sit, uh-huh. and then when we paint, it sits for two weeks after we paint, so it's all cured. Oh, okay. All right. Um, yeah. Because it, it's layers of paint put on top, and we don't want it out there before it's, you know, rains on it too quick or freezes too quick, and then sure. uh, we've got a yeah, so uh, when somebody is it uh so when the the customer receives it is it something that they can assemble on their own or do you send guys out to assemble it? How does that work? Uh my son and I do all the assembly. Oh, okay. Everything we do is in-house. We we do not want anyone else involved in the product but us. Okay. Um that way we know that it is perfect when the customer gets it. Um we show up at the job site, unload the trailer, it takes us anywhere from four to six hours to put one of the ships back together. Huh. Um, I mean, everything's supplied. It's right up to the power supply that comes into it. Huh. And um, then if a customer decides, you know, when in six months, whatever, I'm selling my home, well, it'll all unbolt. Oh, okay. And they can take oh, it with them. It's nice. not a per- nice. doesn't have to be a permanent structure. Uh, and, um, and plus, they will fit through a 42-inch gate to get into someone's yard or through the front door of a house. Oh, that's great. What's the, uh, what's the farthest away customer you've had to go uh, build one for? Uh, so far we've, the furthest one, um, we have one in Clovis, California. We have one in San Francisco on the hillside. All right. And so those are kind of probably Clovis area right there. Okay. All right. So, uh, uh to you East coast people jump on this. This is, <laughs> Well, we've had a lot of inquiries from the East Coast. Um, They want us to bring the ships over there. They want them for display. Um, It's just an expense getting over there right now. And so right now, our ships are scattered through Washington, Oregon, and California. And um, we'll see where it goes. We're we're trying not to get too big. Uh We only are going to build somewhere in the neighborhood of eight to 12 ships a year. Last year we did nine mm. and, and that's all any more than that. It overwhelms us and we don't want these mass produced. Each one is exclusive for each person. We take the fun out of what I want to do and I'm too old for that. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that absolutely makes sense. It, uh, yeah, I've, I've read a lot lately about companies that got bigger than they should have. And, uh, that, so that line of thinking uh, definitely makes sense. Well, you lose track of the detail. When you're letting all these employees start touching this and doing it, your quality has dropped. The details drop. They're not getting all this hands-on that we're making sure every piece is perfect. Um, even the sound system at a job site. My son will sit down with the laptop with the people. He will go through the whole system with them. If they're uncomfortable where a lot of the retired folks or grandparents don't want to load music in, uh-huh. he will preload everything on the USB form, get them all set up and running, and they never touch it again. It just runs the way we've, we program for them. Oh, very nice. And what's really cool is um, we don't get callbacks. You know, it's, it's an amazing product that the quality is so high that um, – they don't break. They don't fall apart. The sound system, um, we've had our sound system down to two below zero. Oh, wow. And still operating. Snow buried over the cannons. It shouldn't have, but yet it's still operating out there, and it was just amazing. It, it became so much fun for the big people. <laughs> and it, it is. Yeah. It, when they get out there, you see the smile on an adult's face when you see one of these systems. You can tell right then they're hooked. I mean, it's just... Yeah, and are the spaces uh, uh, large enough for adults? I, I I don't know if there's enclosed spaces or or is it just open space? Yeah, the c- cabin on the biggest ship, they're all six foot high inside and and a little bit over. Oh wow! Um, yeah, it's at least six foot, and then you've got the joists up above. Um, now everything inside that cabin too. These are not just flat two by fours and pieces put together square. Uh-huh. Everything is sculpted in there. The, the, the ceiling is arched 
and it's got a little uh, uh, diamond in the center. Um, the sidewalls are all curved out and then back in. Everything looks like you're in a pirate ship. All of the panels and the boards have been etched to look like planking or boards. We had one customer comment that they thought it was T-111. <laughs> and I said, no, it's only quarter inch thick. I said, we're doing this and then cutting into these with the machines to mm. make it look like uh, planking and things. Oh, I see. Um, okay. The upper decks, um, we put weight limits on, you know, what can be up there. Mm. And it's not a matter that they would ever break the ship. But if you put 1,000 pounds up on the top and your ship weighs 800 uh, I said, you may capsize, and you got to get out and tip it back up. Right. <laughs> yeah. it, it alone has. We have had, uh, at one show in Napa, we had so many people on the ship, it was just unbelievable. Seattle is the same. They were all over that thing, and, I mean, it's just as solid as, um, plus the wind. Uh-huh. Um, heavy winds up on the Columbia Gorge at oh, one yeah. place. They are just exactly where we put them. The windows are all polycarbonate um, like they use in Florida to protect for hurricanes. Mm, okay. So the wind kids can't break them. They can't sc- scratch or they can sit here and beat on them all day. And unlike plexiglass where it starts to get all foggy and milky looking, this stays crystal clear. Oh, nice. And cabins are all watertight. I have a question about the wood because you said you're, you're generally using mahogany. And I know in the guitar making industry, they've had a lot of trouble uh, both getting wood and and keeping wood and getting it from reputable sources, and a lot of them have gone to alternate woods now for making guitars. Have you had any trouble getting mahogany? Uh, no, ours is engineered sheet goods that we're buying. Oh, we're okay. not using solid lumber. Ah, um, solid lumber is c- cool to build one ship out of, but it's going to react to the elements. It's going to expand, contract, split, crack. Mm-hmm. It's going to do what it should. To get beyond that, we have gone to, um, it's uh, Aquatech that we're using out of Europe. It's uh-huh. exactly what they they build a boat or a yacht out of, what we're using. That's oh, okay. how high-end it is. It's anywhere from 6 millimeter to 18 millimeter sheet goods that we bring in, and then those are all machined and then bent and curved uh, for what we're doing. Interesting. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's very time-consuming. But by doing it that way, um, we took a ship apart yesterday, a Flying Dutchman at our shop here. It had been up for three years, and within just a couple hours, the whole thing was down and in the shop. Huh. Now, huh. that's how amazing it is, is that all the sections unbolted, everything came out, and now we're repainting it because um, we've got an idea for a different color. You know? <laughs> 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 but, yeah, something that uh, solid wood's, um, we tried certain things. Now, we have a mass that is cedar, um, but it is a certain thing. It's all chip carved, so it's supposed to look very rustic. Mm-hmm. But other than that, um, we stay away from anything that's going to expand or contract or especially cause a sliver for a child. Sure. Uh, or even an adult, because right. they hurt. Yeah, yes, they do. I don't like them either. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. When, you, when you take these things on the road, what kind of, uh, what kind of road shows are you doing with them? Uh, last year, I think we had like 10 shows all the way from Seattle, cleared down uh, through San Francisco, uh, actually Arizona. Mm-hmm. This year, we've cut way back to four. We start in Seattle in, um, next week, and then we work our way to uh, Fresno, mm-hmm. and then from Fresno, it's into um, Auburn, and then from Auburn, it's down to Anaheim, and then we'll kind of wait and see. We have a long list of people that want the ship at a sh- their shows. Mm. And we've just become ex- kind of, uh, it's expensive to get them there. Yeah. So we've yeah. selected some of the larger shows this year and uh, that are running longer than just a couple days. Right. And these are like home day. shows, right? Yeah. The Most of these are the high-end home and garden shows. Okay. Um, it gives them something so exclusive to see um, we have been to a pirate festival and, um, you know, it's very cool. It's just, uh, for us being that it's a business that we're trying to sell, they wanted to all play 
but it wasn't anyone that wanted to purchase. Of course. So, yeah. And I think that's just a, just a different mindset at a, at a festival like that as opposed to a home show where people are looking for things to spend money on. Yeah, and what these folks are looking at is, um, with this product here, it's so unusual for them to see it and then to get it in a complete, almost, well, I'll call it a play structure, uh-huh. with the docks, the slide, all this stuff. Um, it's like, hey, we're done. Um, <laughs> It's and when we set this one up down in Clovis in December, um, the guy had a huge waterfall system. You know, this is an amazing place that he was building. We show up at seven in the morning and at noon um, we're just about done. The landscapers wouldn't landscape; they were playing on the pirate ship. <laughs> <laughs> they were, you know, and it's cool, but it gets to a point where you know you guys stay over on your side of the yard so we can get out of here. Right. <laughs> We had to be in San Diego that night, and so we were trying to get out. But we used to carry them on a flatbed trailer, and we did that last year, where the trailer looked like a dock. The ship was all completely assembled. Oh. And so we went down the freeway with the Queen Anne's Revenge, red and black. Um, but it was it could be a long trip. When we crossed into California, uh, I call it the Fruit Patrol, yep. Oregon there. Um uh, the kid walks up to the window and he goes, uh, do you got anything to declare? And out the other window, a guy is yelling, stop those guys. Don't let them cross. Really? And I thought, well, they're going to search underneath the trailer for bugs. Sure. Because sometimes they'll do that. And we get out of the truck. Oh, no. This is like 8 o'clock in the morning. They stopped all of the traffic from crossing into California so they could all get pictures on the pirate ship. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and uh, about the fourth time during our tour back and forth to California, it got to where they would see us coming and they'd just wave and then just go on by. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and but, for, uh, for, for the people listening, that because uh, I have a lot of listeners on the East Coast that probably don't know what this is, there is a, there is a checkpoint at the border between Oregon and California, which is essentially, like you said, a fruit checkpoint uh, so that you don't bring fruit from one state to the other uh, because of a fruit fly concern. Uh, and most of the time now, uh, they, I, there's either nobody there or they just wave me through and go have a nice day. Like I haven't actually been asked for fruit in like three years. Um, it's, it's probably the, the cushiest government job in existence. Um, but that's, <laughs> that's what it is. But I can imagine when you drove through with a pirate ship, they, they were, were pre- perfectly happy to stop all the traffic and take pictures with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, everybody is really, uh, when we were in Anaheim last year, um, it was actually parked, um, at the Paradise Pier Hotel, um, oh. right up tight to the hotel for several days. They enjoyed it. They they were out there and on it. Um, in December, we had it down there again, and it was out in front of the Disneyland Hotel. Nice. And they let us park right out there. I mean, everyone's enjoying it, and the news media especially. These news anchors, if they can go down that slide, <laughs> there's video on our website of these – and an adult – seems to forget that you need your landing gear down on a slide. Uh-huh. They come off those slides, and that slide is a 50 degrees, and it's steep. And yeah. away they go, and right on the rear end, and we've got <laughs> video of news anchors trying to get up off the, the concrete. <laughs> That's funny. They're out of practice. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, they think it's funny. One guy in uh, Sacramento, I think he had some sort of a silicone polyester suit on. He came down that thing like a bullet. <laughs> and uh, there was there was no stopping him. I mean, he he just took off. <laughs> How hilarious. Well, even Los Angeles, that gal, she really, she got up top and I had warned her. I said, now make sure you check your uh, battery pack in your pocket. I said, don't get your wire caught up top when you start to slide. Uh-huh. She sits uh-huh. down. And she turns around and remembers, well, she's already starting to slide. And she's screaming, spotter, spotter, spotter. She goes down. She sprawled out on the floor, and the cameraman had no mercy. He's just zoomed in on her, and she's just... And she she got up slowly after he got off of her with the camera. Uh-huh, but, yeah. uh, That's funny. It's very enjoyable what we make. And to have the grandkids and the whole family involved, that's what makes it unique, because those guys have the... They see things I don't see. Uh-huh. They see the cool ideas that we forgot about. That's really you know, great. We have been told it shows so many times by people, you know, thank you so much for coming. In Arizona, Tucson, 
there was a TV interview with the grandson, and it had run several times the weekend. The show opened up. Uh, this guy runs right up to the booth, and he shakes my hand. He says, you're the reason we came. He says, I only wanted to come and see the grandson and what you have here. He says, I can't buy it, but this is amazing. That's great. And it really makes it worth it when we've done something that makes people happy. Yes, absolutely. So the place where everybody can come and see your projects uh, is DixonWoodworking.com. Uh, they can see the uh, pirate ship uh, clubhouses there, as well as videos of news anchors falling on their butt, which is uh, a nice added feature, I think. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, can can you, uh, I suppose they can contact you and order directly through the website as well? Uh, yes, they can order through the website or they can call the shop here. Um, usually they will call directly here and then we'll talk them through them because this is something they're not expecting. So they have a lot of questions. Sure. Absolutely. Well, that's great. Well, I will make sure that's all linked up on the show notes and Jeff, this has been really fun, man. I'm glad we got a chance to talk. Well, me too. You'll have to uh, come by and check us out. We're going to be in, uh, what date is it here? Uh, Fresno on the fourth, fifth and sixth. All those are on the website and listed. Um, but, um, yeah, we do get a lot of the, the first time we start up in Seattle, we'll get flooded with people wanting us to bring it to more shows. There you go. Yeah. Great. That's very cool. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you had uh, called and talked with us because I really enjoyed it. And I like people to uh, hear about what we do. Me too. Yeah. I think this was really cool. So I hope we can talk again sometime. Thank you. All right. Talk to you later, Jeff. Bye. All right. Bye. And there it is, friends. That is my interview with Jeff Dixon of DixonWoodworking.com. You definitely are going to want to check out this guy's uh, playhouses because man, they're super cool. Uh, I'll try and get a couple pictures up on the uh, the show notes at uh, underthecrossbones.com slash 033, uh, and definitely go to dixonwoodworking.com to see what he's got to offer you. Uh, there are pirates, friends. There are pirates out there, and they are out to steal your identity, and I do not want them to steal your identity because it's a drag. Uh, if you've ever had identity theft issues, you know it's a pain in the butt to get fixed, and I have, and it's not fun. So here's how you get past that. You, you keep the pirates from stealing your identity by getting a LifeLock membership. LifeLock is cheap. They will go out to all the dark, ugly parts of the web. They will make sure that your information is not there. And if it is there, they will help you fix it. And that is the real value here because uh, like the free credit monitoring that you get with like your credit cards and stuff, they don't help you fix it. They'll just tell you it's there. But then you're kind of on your own. LifeLock will help you fix it. And you can get a 10% uh, off discount of your LifeLock membership. Real easy. Just go to uh, underthecrossbones.com slash LifeLock. Click the Start Your Membership button and you will get 10% off your LifeLock membership. I also got a free ebook for you. It is the Pirates of Panama uh, or the Buccaneers of America by Alexander X. Quimelin. Comes under a couple different titles, whichever you like there. Uh, all you have to do is go to underthecrossbones.com and just click the free ebook button and you can get it there. Oh, or if you're out and about and all you have is your phone on you and you want to make it easy, you can text the word pirate and your email address to 94253. Text the word pirate and your email address. Important part, add your email address. Text the word pirate and your email address to 94253. All right, let's get on with the comedy and the music. Uh, comedy today from my pal Rudy Ortiz, who is a very funny up-and-coming comic from the Bay Area. Uh, I think you're going to really dig him. And then we've got a song called Windows Bleed from a band called Chilindrina. And uh, it's very cool. I think you're going to dig that song, too. So here we go. Comedy from Rudy Ortiz. Music from Chilindrina with the song Windows Bleed. I actually had a good girl in my life, and I was going to pop the question. I thought this was going to be the one, right? And I told my pop straight up, I said, Dad, she got a good head on her shoulders. You know, she comes from a good family. This might be the one, but I need some fatherly advice. Should I do it? Should I not do it? What's up? And he said, Mijo, okay, okay. You want to get married? That's cool. That's cool. Just uh, never say I do. <laughs> I'm like, don't even make all the sense. Man. What do you mean get married but never say I do? I'm like, that's crazy, man. I'm like, what did you say when you got married? He said, well, I said, I do my best. I, I do what I can. I do what I do.
And that is it for the show today, friends. Thank you for listening in. Again, you can find all the show notes at uh, underthecrossbones.com slash 033. You can find Jeff Dixon at dixonwoodworking.com and get those awesome pirate playhouses. You can find out more about comedian Rudy Ortiz at rudyortiz.com. Uh, Rudy, R-U-D-Y, Ortiz, O-R-T-I-Z.com. And you can find out more about Chilindrina and hear more of their tracks at Chilindrina. Uh, I'm sorry, ChilindrinaBand.com. Uh, it's C-H-I-L-I-N-D-R-I-N-A. Chilindrina, just like it sounds. ChilindrinaBand.com. And uh, that is it for the show. You can find me at PhilJohnsonComedy.com. Get those tour dates. Get my latest comedy special, Pretty from the Back. All that kind of good stuff. And uh, I will talk to you next week with this same lovely voice. Bye.